change your mindset, you change your life and your business. So many agents are looking for the next tip, trick, or secret that's gonna help catapult their business to the next level. But the truth is, if you don't get your mind right, nothing is going to change. You're never gonna implement it, and it's never going to succeed. Your income is a direct reflection of who you've become as an entrepreneur. So I could give a $50,000 agent the best strategies in the world. If they don't change their mindset, they will stay at $50,000 in 12 months from now. This is why this interview is so important. So many agents are going to hear me say just that and leave this video right now and say, well, this isn't about a tactical strategy. I don't need to be here. Wrong. That's exactly why you're going to be where you are today in 12 months from now. There's going to be a select few of agents that hear me say that and say, maybe there's something that I can learn from this. Those are going to be the agents that do exactly what our guest today did, Evan Young, in 12 months from now. Let me explain. Evan went through living hell, rock bottom. But he did one thing that changed his mindset. And yes, we will talk about practical stuff. He's going to break down his entire prospecting strategy, his script, how he's leveraging content. But the real message here is about mindset. And he's going to talk about how he went from basically losing it all, being under immense stress, literally losing family members to then being ranked consistently on the top producer list in his entire province. So before getting started, two quick things. Number one, I will link Evan's incredible content below so that you can check it out because it's a wealth of knowledge. He's absolutely crushing it right now. And this is from somebody that was struggling for years, three years he was struggling. And now after this one shift, he's become a top producing agent. And number two, I will link his calendar in case you would like to chat with him because he's got a servant's heart and he just wants to see people succeed and win. And that is the type of person you need in your corner if you're not where you want to be right now. So without further ado, let's bring on my good friend, Evan Young and talk about the journey he's been through, which is a crazy one but the one shift that he made that has now turned him into a consistent top producing agent. Man, thank you so much for bringing me on here today, Mike. Um, there's so much I wanna share with you, dude. Like you have no, I don't even know if you realize the impact you've, you, you've made in the culture you've created, how it's changed my whole outlook on life. So um, I'd love, love to chat about it with you, dude, a little bit. Yeah, man, well, I, I'm super excited because I've seen your journey over the last couple of years and you've gone through so many difficulties, like things that most people couldn't even fathom. And you've pushed through and now you're getting ranked on top 10 lists in the entire province or for anybody that's in the States, top 10 list in a state. Um, and you're thriving and you're closing multiple deals every single month, but you've been through the ringer. Like you've gone through really hard times. And I think your story is gonna be so relatable to so many people because this year, you know, if you look at the data, it's been the most difficult sales year the last 12 months since 1995 and that's causing a lot of people to be fearful uh stressed overwhelmed anxious and struggling to push through difficult times but you've done exactly that so i'd love for you to kind of unpack your story a little bit and talk about where you've been and where you are today because you've been through it all absolutely mike um i don't think I don't think I would have been able to get through it if I wasn't around the right people. Start with that. Like that means everything. And I didn't even know that, right? Until you get around it. So um, real quick, I guess I I've been a realtor for seven years. And for six of the seven, I had a full-time job making six figures a year, you know, $130,000, $140,000 a year. And my I always wanted more, right? I always wanted more. So. I got into real estate and I always wanted to, to quit that full-time job and just couldn't do it, right? Just didn't, I didn't know how. I mean, every that's everyone's goal when, they, when they're part-time. So I started with Royal Page, went to KW. EXP's been in uh, New Brunswick where, where I live for about two years. And I wish I had got in a little sooner, but when I, I switched over to EXP and joined the Wolf Pack, which is a group uh, that you and Connor uh, created. And even when I first joined, I'll be completely honest, Mike, I really didn't understand. I mean, I, I was on the calls, I did everything. I didn't really quite understand um, what it was. So I continued with my doing what I was doing. I'm sure I was making a little bit more money because I was at EXP and there's a couple benefits to that. 
but during that whole that whole two years, first two years being at EXP, it was crazy, man. I, I was working full time as an engineer at the railway. Um, I had a uh, I, I feel comfortable talking about it now, but I had a brother younger than me, great guy. I had some addictions and passed away. Um, so then I had my, I have two kids, um, a wife, two parents, and. And then I, I had to get back surgery as well. Could barely walk, man, at the end of it. It was pretty, pretty bad. And in those two years, um, when it got close, sorry, about eight months ago, we went, you talked me into going to one of the events and I couldn't really afford it to Vancouver to EXP Con. Never been to an event before. And when I went, I said, you know what? I'm going. So went to the event and really, really understood what it is you guys created and what like just to be around it and the people and the mindset and how positive it is. And like, I can't even emphasize Mike, how powerful it is. Just the people all in the Wolfpack are so amazing. They reach out to me every day. And after I came back from that event, dude, everything changed, man. I was able to, I did, I, that's the thing. You put out all the, the right tools and tips for people to do but most of them won't do it, right? Yeah. So I sat down, I was like, I'm gonna do everything. Cause you, you were like, dude, I'm nothing special, man. I'm from the same place you are. If I can do it, you can do it. And that stuck with me. I got home, did everything that you laid out with us, basically for free, did it all. And with all that going on and all the support from the whole group and just being around the right people, like, like it's pretty emotional, man. Like I was able to quit my job like flush 130 grand down the toilet. See ya. Got a brand new truck, built a new house, bought a garden home for my parents to live in right across the street and just changed the outlook on everything. I'm, I'm got myself in better shape just being around you guys. Um, I just, everything changed. I'm a better father, better husband, better person all in general. And it's not just about the sales. Like that's what a lot of people think. And what you guys teach us about health, um, family time, time management, it all kind of collaborates under the same roof. And I, I gotta say, Mike, like I couldn't, money couldn't even repay you, man, for what you lay out. And I want people to know that because what you do on a daily, people don't realize like you grind it out every single day, night and day, dude, to, to help people. And, if anyone out there is listening, like I'm telling you, whatever Mike puts out, he's done it. He, 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 he's proven it and he will do anything to help you. So I, man, I thank you so much because it changed my life and I just want to keep growing and growing and growing. And I, I, yeah, man, just, that's pretty much my story real quick, wrapped up in a nutshell, but it, it, it's a great, it's, it's changed my life, dude. And thank you so much, Mike. Well, dude, that, that means the world to me. And again, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, people will see what I do, but it's, you know, I don't think what I do is special because it just comes natural of just putting out content, giving strategies, leaning into people and, and trying to help people. But it's the people like you that actually do something with it that is super fulfilling for me. And, and it makes it all worth it because sometimes you wonder like, do I need to be putting all this out? Should I keep going? Does anybody even care? And the fact that you see people like you that actually take action with it and do something and it could change your life is is a testament to you because mm -hmm. the truth is is like you alluded to i publicly share this information like anybody has access to it but who's going to actually do something with it is the big question and so i would love to kind of unpack that a little more because i i want people to understand the difference between somebody like yourself that listens to that information and changes your life versus somebody that listens to it and doesn't do anything with it. So I would love to kind of get your feedback on what happened at that event or what, what was the big shift in your mind? Because I think that's what people are looking for. You know, I even go to certain coaching events and, you know, really elite level things. And sometimes somebody will just say something a little bit differently and it connects with you and it changes everything. Words are so powerful. What do you find was the big catalyst for you that was that big mental shift to say, I need to change my habits. I need to change my behaviors. I need to step it up. Because like you alluded to, you stepped it up in real estate, 
in family, in health, in accountability. Like you, you stepped it up in every sense. What was that big shift for you that just hit differently when you were at an event or what did you hear? What, what was the, the big change? Well, when I first went, walked in, I remember walking into the hotel, man, and there was a big group of the wolf pack sitting at a table and I'm walking in there and I honestly, dude, felt like really didn't have the confidence, felt like never met you before, like in person. And I just, man, I almost, I really, I, I felt like a nobody. And I guess I kind of was, I mean, I, I just, and then I'm walking into this room and as the weekend kind of what kept going on and on it was just you're around I was around you and everybody else in the pack and we we're all kind of like a unit and everyone's just talking about how they hit their goals at the gym how they hit their goals with this and that and their family and their kids and and then just when you're around that for so many days around the right people and then getting up there and seeing you on stage just absolutely killing it doing your your youtube uh slideshow and everything it's just it's so um i don't even like the word motivating because i i don't even like that i like it's dedication right yeah. all the way through so it just when i was sitting in the airport in vancouver and i'm like holy shit like all, being around all these people just changed everything man and i'm telling yeah. if i never went to the event i don't think anything would have really changed Mm -hmm. It shifted everything. And then I'm like, then I went to uh, EXP Con Vegas and that really put it over the top. I was like, holy shit, like this is crazy. So I guess what I'm saying is if you, you've told me this multiple times, if you want to be a different person and feel better about yourself, you need to surround yourself with the right people. I know that's a saying everyone says, but it, it's so, so true. Yeah. It just changed everything, man. When I got home, I was like, holy, it's just my whole mind shift just poof, switched. Well, and, and I love that because, you know, my it, success is 50% mental, 50% environmental. And a lot of people struggle with both of them, but they don't realize that if you put yourself in rooms with people that are either at a higher caliber or having different conversations, more elevated, more positive, more inspiring conversations, yeah. that rubs off on you. And it's really easy for realtors to kind of stay in your silo and just keep doing your daily routine. And you, it's really easy when you're doing that to get all caught up in your own head. And one of the easiest ways to break that chain is to go to an event, surround yourself with people that are talking about, you know, smashing goals and getting in better shape and, you know, mm -hmm. changing their family's lives and more time with their kids or their spouse and things like that. And it's impossible not to let that sink in because you're surrounded by it. But mm -hmm. The big question that I have for you that I think is going to be really important is how did you stay dedicated after that? Because there's a lot of people that will go to events at any brokerage. They'll come back fired up and they're fired up for like a week and then they go right back to their bad habits. But one of the things that I've seen with you and your business partner, Brandon, is that you guys came back from the event and have stayed dedicated, inspired, disciplined since then you know, we're approaching a year later since that happened, right? And I think that's such an important topic of, of not slipping back into different behaviors. You've, you've leveraged that momentum to go on to absolutely catapult your production. Mm -hmm. How do you stay in that mindset? I don't, uh, geez, I guess my family, that's it. If I quit and you always say this, it just, again, being around the right people. And that's why I love our group because we have these calls every single week that almost kickstarts it, boom, every week, right? So as you say, like, if you quit, you're quitting on your family. So like mm -hmm. every morning I get up at 4.30 and when my alarm goes off, my wife's like smashing me, like, okay, get up. I hit snooze once, I'm like, I'm like, and every morning I'm like, okay, no one's coming to save me here, mm -hmm. let's go. So that's all I think about. Who? I have no choice, man. I want to I want to provide for my family. I want them to live a better life. I want me to live a better life. And and that's just it. And that's what you you always say that, man. Like you have no choice. And you, and one thing that stuck with me too is you said you put out a lot of people quit and you put out three videos a week for a year 
and never or was it three years one year straight yeah one year straight never got any leads so like just following that presence too on youtube i i just basically started going hard like six months ago and now i got i'm i'm not i know it's nowhere near where i need to be but i'm 123 subscribers in like six months so like just because of what you told me. So that that's a win for me, man. It's just been everything. I My mind shift stays the way it is because of the people I'm around, because of what you guys created. It just changed everything. My wife's like, who doesn't even know who I am anymore. I just changed person. Dude, I never read a book in my life till like this, she, this in 2023. Now I'm crushing them every, every week, right? So well, I can, I can only imagine the impact that has on your family showing up better as a husband showing up better as a father and growing because so many people stay exactly where they are they get married they get comfortable they have kids they just that's kind of their life and and they don't continue to improve year over year but how incredible is it for your kids and your spouse to now have a, a father and a husband that's always growing always pushing and wanting to get better every single year like you're showing up better for them yeah, man. And one uncomfortable, like, I feel so good, but there's one, uh, on the only uncomfortable thing about completely changing my life is some of the things in my, how do I put it in my older life? Like yeah. it, it gets lonely if yep. that makes sense. There's like a lonely stage. I think, does that make mm -hmm. sense, Mike? Let's unpack that because I've gone through it. Everybody goes through it, but not many people talk about it. You know, when, before I got into real estate, I had all my university friends and I would go out every weekend with them. You'd hang out, you'd right. have a great time. And then when I made the decision to get into real estate, they basically abandoned me. And now I'm making this huge shift in an industry where I don't know anybody. All the people that I did know kind of abandoned me. I can't relate to them anymore. They can't relate to me. And it really is a lonely journey. And it's a, it's a lonely journey until you find the people like your brand and, and many other people in communities like this where you can find other like-minded people. But there is a very lonely stretch in there that deters a lot of people. And I think a lot of people fall back into that same routine because they crave going back to the, the, their old life right. instead of saying, if I go back to that, it's an anchor. I'm never going to propel to my goals, right? And, and it's really easy for people to revert back instead of saying, hey, proximity is power. If I let these people stay close to me, that's just me accepting the fact that I'm not going to push myself to get to my goals. How did you manage that? How did you manage that struggle of basically coming to grips with the fact that there's an element of you that is dying, which is the old version of you in order to become the new, better version of you. It's hard. Um, I remember asking you about it. We were at breakfast there in Vegas. I remember asking you about it, man, and you, you went through it and it's, it's hard, man. Like I'm not the kind of guy that like, I would do anything for anybody, anytime, doesn't matter who you are, if you need help. And I, and I'm not the kind of guy that would ever think I'm better than anybody for any other reason. But I feel like, I feel like I kind of think people, some people think that, but it's not the, it's not the case. It's just, this is what I enjoy to do now. I don't enjoy waking up hang hungover. I, I, I am addicted to feeling good and working on my business for my family. So it's, it's really tough, man. Like it, it, I think it, there's a lot of people go through this and they're not alone because it bothers me like still every weekend, you know, but I think you just, if you, again, back to being around the right people in the right group, if you have the right people that really truly want to see you do good, it will keep you in that straight and narrow. But if you're not around that, like if I was at EXP, man, just like myself or whatever, I, I honestly could probably say things wouldn't have changed like they did. Guaranteed. That's that's yeah. my feel. It's all about who you're around. And that's why at the start there, this video, like that's why I emphasize so much on what, what you guys created. It just, it changed everything. But that, it, it's not easy. It's not easy to stay on that path. So, but once you get to that, like 
as you said, Mike, a habit uh, takes 30 days to form a habit. Once you yeah. start to do it every day, man, it just it's just a habit. Eventually, you just don't care. It's like, okay, cool. If you want to hang out with me, great. If you don't, great too. Because this is what I'm doing and this is what makes me happy. Big time. And, yeah. you know, it's been a journey for me too. Like my, my inner circle now is much smaller than it used to be, but in a very positive way. And people that genuinely care about you and understand you and support you no matter what you're going through. And so you might have less people, but you've got the right people there for you. Right. And so... You know, this this might be a, a touchier subject before we get on to, you know, how you've been doing in terms of your business, but how did that whole situation with your brother impact you? Because that that was also in part associated with your old life, right? That, and th that's not easy. That was, that was a rough one, man. And I, again, I don't mind talking about it at all. At first it was rough. So uh, I'm 34. He'd be 32, so we were super close growing up, right? Um, man, real good guy. Like, he was, like, drafted to the Quebec Major Junior for hockey, paid scholarship, had life, you know, in his hands. Got hanging around with the wrong people. One thing went to another and went down the wrong road. That was really hard. When he, when he passed away, Mike, um, I had... Just when he, just before he had passed away, I had sold my parents' house, and we were um, living in a, a two-unit. I owned it while we were building our new home, and I was renewing the unit I was in, living in for my uh, for my family. And the tenants had just moved out in the basement, and I just planned on moving my parents in, and. The, Man, I went down after they left and the place was a complete dive. Like got mold, everything. And my parents had to move in in two weeks. So within that two week span, man, my brother had passed away. Um, I had to completely gut and reno an apartment. I had to, I worked at the railway and I was doing real estate. It was honestly the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And then, man, I remember it was on a Monday. At that time, I wasn't really plugged into what you created. I went on the call that Tuesday. You were doing it. I don't know why, I just felt something told me I needed to. I went on that call. After that call, I was like, shit, I have to do, I got, I got all this stuff. It's up to me to hold everything together here. I didn't have time to, to worry about anything. So I got the whole reno done in two weeks got my parents moved in so that was a box check and then I kind of started looking after things and lining things up and then I could kind of sit back and think about everything but I'll tell you man it was the hardest thing in my life I ever had to deal with and it's pretty emotional and and for without you even realizing man what you how you helped me it everything helped me just your positive uh, mindset and, and kind of giving us that push when we need it. It's like, no, no, Evan, get to the gym. Basically go to the gym, work out your anger. Let's go because it'll help as hard as that is to say, but that's basically what you would tell us. Like it's not just all real estate. Right? So man, anyway, it, it was, it was the hardest year of my life. Like there was so much going on. We had the newborn baby and, um, yeah, man, it was, it was rough. And again, like without you even knowing it just, it, it helped the whole way through it all dude well i think dude it's it's such a testament to you seeing those signs because you know i'm a huge advocate of the fact that there's a lesson and a blessing in every situation right and everybody's going through difficult times um most just don't talk about it and i think if you can look at the lesson and blessing from any situation you can always turn it into a positive right and and so many things happened you know ed Mileto was says this is that things in life happen for you, not to you. Right. And when you can start to look at certain very difficult situations happening for you, you know, there were so many things in that two week period that in essence, as difficult as they were, they helped craft the Evan that you now are. Yeah. And so there's certain things that have happened that you never would have became the man that you are today, the leader, the role model, 
if those things hadn't been the catalyst of saying, I need to change. And as difficult as they are, they've now created the person that you now are who is going to go on to change not just your kids' lives, your wife's lives, your family's lives, but so many other agents as well. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of beauty in that, as difficult as it is. And I think that's one of the most important things that we can do during these times of uncertainty, difficulty. Um, you know, we go through our peaks and our troughs, mm -hmm. but looking at every situation and saying, what kind of beautiful thing can I take from this experience that's going to help me become a better person? And one day you're probably going to meet a younger version of Evan that's going through something similar. And you can say, hey, dude, I've been there. I yeah. get it. I relate to you here's how we can get through this together you know and that was one thing to yeah man and that's one thing too i really took from you mike was uh in the coaching and everything you you provides was before i really changed my mindset and before i changed my mindset like little things would bother you that didn't even matter right yep like shit that doesn't even matter man like and now, like, man, my whole, like, a wall could fall out in my house. A window could blow out in a storm. I'd be like, oh, well, okay, great. How are we going to, this is what we got to do to fix it. Like, nothing matters. Like, that's a huge shift of mindset. I used to get excited pretty easily and stuff. And uh, get short-tempered, maybe. Let's leave it at that. Maybe it was just coming from the blue-collar world. I don't know, man, but... Learning how to change that shift, like nothing bothers me anymore, dude. Like somebody could look right at me and tell me off or tell me whatever. I just feel like, okay, sounds good. See ya. But just the, all these little things, man, they all add up. So I just, yeah, man, just completely changed my mind being around you, dude. Well, and, and man, you know, before we go on to, you know, how you're getting so much business, which is, is gonna be another important topic, what you just said is so powerful because I used to be the same as you. You know, I used to get worked up over little things. I'd get stressed over stuff that like, you know, really didn't matter that much. And once I started shifting my mindset in the sense of don't worry about what you can't control. Right. Right. Like we all go through so many difficult things. You get hit from every single angle. People are trying to tear you down. People are saying this, that, and the other thing. Um, but if you can't control the outcome, why worry about it? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, you know, get so worked up over an outcome that might not even exist or might not be real or might not be true. And you fabricate things in your mind. And then you, you realize that you just spent a week, two weeks out of routine because you got all caught up in something that you couldn't control anyway. Right. right? So I think it's, that's a huge learning lesson for that. We both have gone through, uh, that makes a world of a difference. It's like, You're right. you know, you lose a listing, you lose a client. Well, if you lose a listing, stressing over it isn't going to make a difference. You lost the listing. So what most people do is they get all caught up in saying, well, why did I lose it? And, you know, woe is me. And they get all caught up in their head or when a friend works with a different realtor, right? That happens all the time and people get all upset about it. The fact is they're working with a different agent. You getting upset about it isn't going to change the outcome. They're working with a different agent. Go focus your time on getting more clients, getting new clients, getting two more based right. on the one that you just lost. And so I, I love that you've done that, man. It's You've grown so much in a year, and I think that's a really important kind of way to pull a full circle is that your whole life can change in a year. And so if the last year, last two years didn't go as planned as it didn't for many people, the past doesn't define the future. You can have a completely different future if you just make that conscious decision to put yourself in a different environment, surround yourself with better people, and change your mindset. Because that's truly all that it takes you know so you've had these big mindset shifts and i would love to kind of unpack how that's impacted your production because it's one thing to have the mindset shift it's another thing to go out and do it and to actually turn that into action that leads into business and right. you've done just that you know, you're getting ranked on these top producer lists. You're having clients coming directly to you. Like your business is also exploding, which is a byproduct of your shifted mindset. But what did that look like from you going from, you know, what did you do that translated your mindset shift into more leads, more appointments, more clients? Well, 
As you said at, from the first, you said this many times. I don't care what it is, write down all the things you want to do and crumple it up, throw in a garbage can and pick out one, right? It's just yeah. start somewhere. For anyone that doesn't know where to start, just start somewhere. It doesn't matter where. It's like, just do it, whether it's door knocking, cold calling, whatever. But for me, I really s- plugged in. So your social agent academy, uh, there's many parts to that. I really sat down. I, I went through the YouTube one. It's so, so detailed. Like, I mean, my grandmother could understand it. That's how easy it is to do. Like, that's how easy you make it. So I did that and just kind of watching you and what you do. And like, you literally, like, guys, Mike Sherrard lays everything out for us. The blueprint for us to do everything. So for me now, it's just consistency, dude. It's having a calendar like i have a calendar dialed in every single day time blocks what i'm doing where i'm going um like today this was blocked out so my phone is on airplane mode do not disturb everything is done there's no distractions so everything's in the calendar so like so uh maybe it's two or three times a week it's posting on uh or reaching out to people on social media Uh, maybe it's recording for my youtube videos it, it, it's just all consistency, but a lot of my business is coming from social media um, because of what I follow, what you teach us. And I'm a really big cold caller. I really enjoy it. Uh, I actually have a couple of YouTube videos on it and I just put them out and they're kind of fun, man. I, I get the music going and I'm, I'm having fun with it. A couple people hang up. It's all good. And it used to bother me, Mike, but you, you're like, listen, would you rather have a door slam in your face a home, a phone hung up on you or be broke. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Like, so I'm like friggin' hang up all day. Let's go. <laughs> Let's keep going. So I use telelisting here. We actually get it for free with eXp. I'm not sure if you knew that. Mm-hmm. So I use that. I'm a big cold caller, but that's not really for now business. That's for later. So what I do with that is try to get emails, Mike, when I call people and the goal is to get the email and then I put the email into my CRM and I send out a, I have a my assistant a VA send out a weekly email every single week so I'm showing up in all these people's inboxes so they might not do something this week but it might be 10 years and I'm not even gonna remember who most of them are right yeah. so that's the goal getting the emails the cold calling for the future business you got to talk to homeowners right like it's our job can't sit home and that the social media you that's why you need a calendar you got to have everything plugged in so you can get to work but i love that dude i think you know i i love your excitement around cold calling because i had the same with door knocking you know i had a certain kind of like amp up song that i would listen to Did before you? every time i would get out yeah, door yeah. knocking it, oh yeah and and it you know it we talk about this all the time is every single thing that you need to do to generate leads and to build your real estate business in the beginning sucks it doesn't matter. Recording videos in the beginning sucks. Cold calling sucks. Door knocking sucks. It it all sucks. So mm-hmm. pick your poison of what you believe sucks the least and find enjoyment and love in doing it. Right? right. Like I is door knocking a ton of fun? No, but I found fun in doing it because you can become addicted to the progress. You become addicted to the process right. and you start to see yourself grow in terms of it's almost like you know, you go to the gym and you go to like a spin class or something. It's living hell for 60 minutes. But as soon as you leave that spin class, right. you feel like a million bucks. Mm-hmm. It's like door knocking. It sucks for the two, three hours you're doing it. But the level, you become addicted to that feeling of how you feel after you did it. Yeah. Because you just made progress. You just got outside of your comfort zone. And you expanded your being. You became a better person because you're growing your communication skills, your mental toughness, your fortitude. Like, it's so cool to see that you found enjoyment in doing that because that's all the people need to do. The way that you win the game is you find love in doing something that will actually generate you business. So, you know, and, and we'll be we'll make sure to link all those videos that you recently put out related to cold calling in the description below because I think people are gonna really love how you're approaching that. In a quick kind of summary, 
how are you approaching cold calling? What What's kind of your strategy there? Um, who are you targeting? What are you doing? Because I use telelisting too. Used to just rock it out, crush it out every single day. Yeah. Um, and it everything works. It works. And so what's your approach with that? Uh, I guess it depends. But I like, like, if you can find a good excuse, like there's a lot of excuses to talk to people. Like, let's just yeah. say you go on your MLS and you see uh, 123 Main Street just sold for this much. Great. You write it down. I take my book and I write down, okay, on one side I'll put like emails I get and then I'll put what, what the house sold for. And then I have another side for uh, homeowners who didn't answer. Like there's no voicemail and I'll send them like a printed letter I have done up. And um, anybody, so what I do when I call them, just say, Hey, Mr. Sh if you pick up like Mr. Sherrard, yeah, speaking, most people just like stand off, boom, right? And I have fun with it, man. It's hilarious. I'm like, hey, Mr. Sherrard, how you doing today? And you're like, just basically like, good. I'm like, great, great. Look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, sir. I just want to let you know with 123 Main Street just sold. Um, would, are you curious for how much? Because everybody's curious for how much it's sold for, right? Yeah. I am. If your house sells next door to you, you want to know for how much. And they're like, usually they're like, yeah, yeah, how much? I'm like, well, it went for the, whatever the price was. They're like, and then they start talking. And then you get to know them and blah, 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 blah. How long have you lived there? And you start a conversation. And like, look, is there anything in the world I could do for you, Mr. Sherrard? Not, and they'll usually say like, oh, not today. And I'm just like, look, would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? Either it's five, 10 years down the road. And they usually say, great, great. What's best email to reach at? Get the email. Right in the CRM, boom, done. Now I'm touching them every single week for the rest of their life. Easy yep. as that. I love it. I have so much fun. Dude, It's that's amazing. And I think the fact that you have fun with it is a key. And yeah, man, at the we end should of the do day, live like, one someday for some so the people. We should do a live cold call session, me and you, and record it. It'd be so fun. I'm all for it. I'm all for yeah, it, Let's dude. do it's, it. That'd be a good video. I think that'll be an amazing video. I think, you know, I, I used to do the same. Like I would, I would just have, I got so many listings when I was door knocking from people that just said, I wasn't even thinking about selling, but you showed up with this, such a positive energy that it just put us in a good mood. And then we started having the conversation and you know what? We actually are considering maybe making a move. And it all hey. started with just showing up with a positive attitude like that, that, you know, rubs off on people so clearly. And I think the, the can, everybody's looking for the perfect script. Everybody's looking for the perfect approach. And the truth is the ones that are going to exceed and excel like you are the ones that just have fun doing it because it's, it's having a casual conversation that makes people open up because they're like, Hey, this seems like a friend, you know, it's, it's not it, when you go in with the mindset that this is a job that, that I, I hate doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway it's going to be reflected in your conversion rate. Mm -hmm. But when you show up with positivity and you're like, Hey, I'm going to make this fun and I'm just going to enjoy it as much as possible. That also reflects in your conversion rate. So I love it, man. I'm, I think it's incredible. And I'm, I'm really excited to see those videos uh, related to, to how you do it. Yeah, it was fun, man. I just like, um, the family, I just kind of go like a family friend effect. Like you treat everybody like your brother, sister, aunt, uncle, mother, father, whatever. That's how you treat yeah. them. And, Look, you're going to get people hang up on you, slam the door in your face, but who cares? Again, would you rather be broke or talk to people? So I love it, dude. Well, you know, I'm going to be linking all of your content below in your channel, but I always like to kind of pull things full circle with just getting a better understanding as to two things, which is, you know, what ultimately made you make the decision to join EXP and our group specifically, but more importantly, what can people expect when partnering with you? Because you and Brandon have done something special. You guys have a really unique dynamic, but you have both completely changed your mindsets over the last year. And I think what's happening going forward is so many people are just looking for the next tip, trick, or strategy. But the truth is, is none of that's going to make a difference if you don't change that mindset and you don't change your environment. So what could people expect? So why I, so here's the thing too. I thought I see, uh, actually it's funny. I got a call last week, um, from an agent that just joined EXP wondering if they could get on our Tuesday night call. B 
because we had that. It was the one when we had the uh, the editor from Disney and Marvel talking about lighting. Yeah. I was like, sorry, you can't. You're not a part of the Wolf Pack. So I guess where I'm going with this, Mike, is whatever brokerage you're going to, no matter where it is, you have to really, really do your research and really find out as much as you can about your sponsor because your sponsor is absolutely everything. And I couldn't reiterate that more than enough because it really is. What attracted me, I followed you for years on social media, right? So, and you never know who's watching, uh, right? So yeah. I followed you for years. So that's why I went to EXP. I seen what you were creating and I, that, I just knew, do you know what I mean? And again, when I first went, I didn't get plugged in right away until I went to that event. But I think for me now, since I'm, uh, I'm a completely different person, um, I, what I want to do going forward is obviously I want to grow my business more, but I really truly have passion of, of helping people and other agents because it's almost not fair to share what we have here because it changed my life so much. So if I can help any agent or person or anybody in general with anything that I learned in my, the last couple of years from really changing that mindset to what you're showing us, if I can give that to anybody and help anybody, I don't care if I'm on a call with them every day till they get it right. Cause people are struggling out there, man. And um, just know guys like, there's a way out. There's a way out. You just got to be around the right people. And I, I I think that's that's my answer for that, Mike. I mean, what, what do you think? I think it's as perfect as an answer as it could be um, because it's the truth. And that's that's just why I do what I do as well. You know, right. do I need to, you know, when I'm sick like I am now, be recording content, you know, all weekend long when I'm, you know, half throwing up, half sick? No, but I do it because I care. I know that there, there could be one video that week, that recording session that connects with somebody that just is that one video that changes their business, changes their life, changes their mindset. And when you have people like yourself and myself, we come and we, we partner together, the people that join us, you and I have both been through some pretty heavy stuff. And so, you know, you said it perfectly, you're not alone. There's, there's people out there that think that they're alone, but being alone is, is a choice. Because if you're, if you feel like you're alone and you stay in the same environment that you're in right now, you are choosing to be alone, right? And, and Ed Milet says a quote all the time, which is that what you do not hate, you will eventually tolerate. If you don't hate where you are today, like you cannot live, you hate it so much, you're going to stay there. You're going to tolerate it. Right. But if you do hate where you are, you do feel lonely, you're not a part of a community, you're not getting training, you're not getting support, it doesn't have to be that way. There's right. people out there like us and others that are willing to pour into you every single day to help you get outside because of, guess what's the best thing? Well, I've, you know, I'm really thankful to, to hear that I've done that, you know, for you and with you. Well, now you get to go do that for somebody else. Yeah. And guess what? That next person that you change, they can do it for somebody else. And that's where you start to create impact. And that's where you start to make a difference in the world. Yeah, man. I it, I can't wait. I can't wait to even just help one person. Like, her wa watching you in Vegas, Mike, like you just trying to get a ball of water. And I think the, the water station would have been like 20 feet away. And every <laughs> second you turn around, there's somebody coming up to you saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm like... Oh my God, like that must feel amazing. So, and I see all that too. But I, w I wanted to say one thing, Mike, before we, before you wrap this up here. On the lonely face. So I think a lot of people feel, um, there's a lot of misconception out there about where EXP is cloud-based and virtual, like us. I couldn't have better relationships. I have more friends in the Wolfpack that is virtual that I'm closer to than like, and then people that in my own hometown, like yeah. just because we're not next door to each other in the same city, it really doesn't matter. Cause that, that there's a lot of that, that people think cause it's all zoom calls and stuff, but it's not true at all. You get more support than 
anywhere else in the world. So I, I just wanted to add that in there. Well, that's, it's such a great way to, to wrap this up, dude, because I'm the same way. You know, if I look at the majority of my best friends, they're people that I met on this journey. And the cool part about being at a, at a cloud-based brokerage is you're not restricted to your local market. Like here in Calgary, there isn't a huge amount of people that think like I do at my age, do what I do that I can relate with. Same with you, even more so in New Brunswick. Right. So if you're, if you're in a traditional kind of brokerage, you're, you're restricted to basically meeting people within the confines of that market center. But with this, some of my best friends are now in, you know, Seattle, they're in, uh, you know, Miami, they're in Denver, they're in Austin, they're all over the world, people that I never would have had the opportunity to meet, if it wasn't for expanding that opportunity by being in a cloud based brokerage. So Evan, dude, you know, I, I really appreciate you coming on here and, and sharing everything from from such a genuine perspective, because I know it's not easy to be open and, and share a lot of the things that you did. But those are the conversations that are going to make a massive impact and, and truly change somebody's life. And I implore anybody that it, that if this conversation relates to you, you're feeling lonely, you're, you're going through a difficult time to reach out to Evan, because I know that you're a servant leader, my friend, you genuinely do care. You've got that East Coast maritime mindset of, of just wanting to see somebody win, succeed, be happy, and build the life that they've always wanted. So any final words, my brother? Yeah, man, just want to say again, Mike, I love it. Love you. It's awesome. Um, thank you so much for having me on here on your channel today. And if there's anything I can ever do for you, dude, reach out absolutely anytime. And uh, again, for everyone out there, if there's anything Mike can do for you or myself or just anyone, reach out anytime. We're happy to help because it's a lonely world out there, guys. 100% my friend. And again, it doesn't have to be. So guys, I'm going to make sure to link all of Evan's incredible content below. He's got an incredible YouTube channel, as mentioned, documenting the stuff that he's doing, sharing a wealth of knowledge, and you have the ability to partner with both of us so that you don't have to be on a lonely journey by yourself anymore. And you have people that have been through similar things to you that can help you get through this next phase in your business. So thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.